Imagine the thoughts of that man, Brian Kelly, as he led his team to the stadium for the first time. A moment of which he dared not dream while working his way through the coaching ranks. Today, he'll put his fate in the hands of untested quarterback Dane Christ against a familiar opponent, Purdue, and its new quarterback, Robert Marv. But over 20 years since the last national title, all eyes will be on the man charged with putting the fight back in the Irish. Let's go. Come here. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up. Coach Kelly has changed the mentality of this football team to feel that we owe Notre Dame instead of Notre Dame owing us as football players. 11 national championships. The day, the day. We're going to win. Fight, 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 fight. Seven Heisman Trophy winners. Touchdown, Notre Dame. But two tumultuous decades have brought a new coach to town, charged with restoring the identity of the fighting Irish. You build trust today. The two can count on me. The first game against Purdue is going to be incredibly important for the path that the season takes. It's a motivation, you know, to start off the year 1-0. The team's goal of this season is to win the national championship. You have to trust in Coach Kelly that he's taking us there. We've got to start winning some football games. The team we put on the field is going to turn hope into a real sense of reality. Stadium until now when he carries the hopes of the Irish faithful and they'll face Purdue the team they have played more than any other team except for Navy and their second year head coach Danny Hope and the Boilermakers know their way to South Bend they always give the Irish a tussle and here come the Boilermakers of Purdue. Unseasonably cool day at Notre Dame Stadium celebrating its 80th anniversary this season. We're in the press box high above the playing field. Welcome everyone to Notre Dame Stadium. Tom Hammond here and of course Brian Kelly's not the only debut today. <laughs> As most of you know Pat Hayden left to become the athletic director at USC. So Mike Mayock is coming to the booth and we welcome you Mike. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun yep. and I guess change is the operative word today. Certainly Brian Kelly has brought a lot of changes to Notre Dame. And you know Tom three head coaches have come and gone since that magical 1988 national championship season. Brian Kelly said you don't take this job aspiring to be eight and four. You aspire for national championship. So the goal Goals defined, how do you get there? Offensively, different scheme. Spread offense, high speed, no huddle. Defensively, a 3-4. Not many college teams play that, but the biggest change, Tom, to me, it's in the building, the culture of the building. Right. They're going to be a tougher team, a better conditioned team. They're going to win games in the fourth quarter, and they will be as good in November as they are in September. It really is a whole new attitude around the campus, and, you know, you talk about that spread offense, high octane under Brian Kelly, but he has an untested quarterback in Dane Christ. Yeah, six foot four, two thirty. His arm is as big as Jimmy Clausen, but I think he's a better athlete than people think. Look for his feet to get integrated in the run game, and I really think the run-pass balance will be better for Brian Kelly here than he had at Cincinnati. Well, Purdue also runs the spread offense, and they also have a new quarterback, Robert Marv, the transfer from the University of Miami. Big play waiting to happen, but I put 
Samoa eight tape on when he was a true freshman. And he's also prone to put the ball up for grabs and throw interceptions. So, Tom, my question is, was it freshman mistakes or is it in his DNA? All right, a tough uh, assignment to open at Notre Dame Stadium. We'll see how he does later on. But first, for the first pregame interview, Alex Flanagan, sideline with Brian Kelly. Well, Coach, you've brought the team down the tunnel and onto the field. Describe some of the emotions that you're feeling. Well, the first thought was I better run really fast because our guys were pretty excited about playing. But, um, you know, the pageantry is what makes college football and Notre Dame special. Now we got to go play some good football. So many people across this country are excited about the prospects of this team. What can Notre Dame fans expect this season? Well, we're going to play hard. Um, there's no question about that. I don't know how to coach it any other way. Um, you know, we're going to have to have players make plays just like anybody else in college football. But our kids understand um, that they need to start winning some football games. I think that's more than anything else. They're, they're going to have a winning attitude. Gathering them in the locker room before you came out onto this field, what were the words that you left your team with? Well, you know, all the pageantry, all the things about Notre Dame, you still get what you deserve. And uh, we've got to go out and earn it today. We've got to play harder than Purdue. Uh, if we do that, we've got a good chance. Tom, Brian Kelly ready to make his Notre Dame debut. Thanks, Coach. Sounds like he is ready, and he said uh, he couldn't even dream of something like this when he first started his coaching career as a head coach at Grand Valley State. And uh, he's not awed by the job, that's for sure. And he said he hasn't been taken too much by surprise, but... He's gotten some advice from Lou Holtz, who said if you have a plan and you do, you can enjoy it at Notre Dame. And from Eric Parsegian, who told him uh, you have to have toughness, mental toughness at Notre Dame. The Irish won the toss and elected to receive. So the Notre Dame spread offense will get its debut here on the opening series of the game. Carson Wiggs will kick it off for Purdue, one of the best kickers in college football, Riddick and Wood. Are the deep men? There's Theo Riddick. They're deep for the Irish. So the Brian Kelly era about to begin with the kickoff by Wiggs. And underway as Wiggs booms it deep into the end zone. Wood will down it there, and the Irish will take over at the 20 yard line with Dane Christ at the controls. Chris is a guy obviously that needs to step up and play like a guy with a lot more experience than he truly has Tom there are the numbers on Chris he's only thrown 20 career passes and coming off an ACL injury but was highly touted coming out of high school in California and has the physical tools according to his coaching staff he's just still learning the nuances of this spread offense had his most sustained action against Purdue last year when he led his team to two touchdowns in three possessions before Jimmy Clawson came back in. So hurry up, shotgun. What we'll see from the Irish most times. And the handoff to Armando Allen. Gets two or three tough yards. As we take a look at our Adidas starting lineups. And the Notre Dame offensive line with uh, Martin and Dever, two new tackles charged with protecting Christ in the spread offense. Of course, Floyd and Rudolph, two of the most potent receivers at their positions. There is Theo Riddick. And uh, Purdue ready for it. There are a lot of questions about this Purdue defense, especially in the secondary. Four new starters in that secondary. That's a ball that Theo Riddick has to come up with, though. Well thrown by Christ. So an incompletion on his first attempt, setting up third down and six. The four deep shell, four defensive backs playing conservatively in the nickel package. Now empty backfield as he sends Allen out. Steps up in the pocket, and Chris completes the pass to Rudolph. He rambles for a tight end. He's across the 35-yard line for Notre Dame. That's a gain of 12 on the first catch of the season by Kyle Rudolph. Rudolph is at the inside position on the slot, and everybody ran him off deep. Here he is here. You're going to see nothing but deep routes on both sides of the football, and then just a short crossing route. And look, they're over the football already, ready to go first down. There's the hurry up. That pass went almost through the hands of... One man into the arms of T.J. Jones, the freshman wide receiver who gets the start. And on his first Notre Dame reception, catches it for 15 yards and a first down. Irish ready to go, 49 of the Boilermakers. This is a fast pace right here. You don't see this in college football at this level. 
Grist handoff to Allen, tackled in the backfield for a loss. And it's Ryan Kerrigan and uh, Gerald Gooden, two of the best defensive ends you'll find anywhere. Kerrigan, I think, on tape is one of the top two or three defensive ends in the country. You have to account for him on every single play. You can't let him go unblocked, even when you're running away from him. He's got a tremendous motor, tr great ability, and I thought he dominated a football game both against Ohio State and Notre Dame a year ago. Second down, 13. Chris, hand it again to Allen, this time to midfield. Not quite back to the original line of scrimmage. Gerald Gooden with another tackle. And Jason Warner, the outside linebacker, their Sam linebacker, did a good job also. You're going to see right here, it's a it, Braxton Cave on a little bit of a draw, delayed play. Sets up a third down. Cave, the new uh, starting center for the Irish. So third down and long for Dane Christ. Empty backfield. Strip. Chris picked it up on the bounce and got back to the line of scrimmage. It was Ryan Kerrigan who led the nation last year with seven forced fumbles. He told us earlier this week in West Lafayette that he is relentless attacking the ball. And look, he got quick off the line of scrimmage. He gets lower than Dever. He's able to rip and dip. That means you're coming off hard on the outside. You rip underneath with that inside arm. His strength is good enough, and he's aware enough to strip the football on the way by. So here is Turk to punt for the first time this season to Keith Smith. He calls for a fair catch and takes it at about the seventh yard line. There's a flag down, our first penalty of the game. It's a Big Ten crew here today. Dave Whitwit is the referee. Robert Marv. About to make his Purdue Five debut. Yards. Five in the backfield. Five yards from the previous spot. Will re-kick fourth down. You know, and Keith Smith caught that inside his 10-yard line, so you know they're going to make him re-kick. And Tom, one of the th th themes we talked about all week was Ryan Kirk in the defensive end. And he's already stepped up, made a tackle on a play going away in the run game, and then came back with the strip in the pass game. They're going to have to identify him and more than one guy. I don't think Tyler Dever can handle him one-on-one. -on -one. You know, Coach Kelly telling us that uh, as the game unfolds, they will see if they have to alter their protections, move the pocket, chip and do different things. But that snapped it to the up man. He pitched it back to Turk, and then he didn't have a very good punt. He'll go out of bounds. About the 22 or 3 yard line. And so Purdue, Robert Barr on the field when we come back. Notre Dame football is brought to you by Discover. It pays to switch. It pays to discover. By Sprint, the Now Network. By Mercedes-Benz. Experience truly great engineering today. It's your authorized dealer. And by Coke Zero. Taste what's possible. So Notre Dame forced to punt. After Ryan Kerrigan had forced a fumble, and Robert Marr, the new Purdue quarterback, transfer from the University of Miami, and like Dane Chris, coming off an ACL injury, though both tell us their knees are fine. Marv at the University of Miami got his first start in the swamp against Florida, and now starting his first game of Purdue at Notre Dame Stadium. Chased from the pocket, and uh, unloads, but short to Dirking. And Dirking is stopped for a loss on the play, so... The Purdue coach is telling us that Marv had a lot of escapability. He showed it there. He and needed to. Darius yeah. Fleming was in his face. And Fleming expected to have uh, a big season from that outside linebacker spot, especially rushing the passer. Show us the I formation here. McBurst is the tailback. Under center, Marv pitching to McBurst. Can't get the edge, only a couple of yard gain. Interesting coming out with option early, establishing their quarterback, Robert Marv, is the true athlete that he is. Harrison Smith and Gary Gray, the Notre Dame tackle. Misdirection, toss. What they're trying to do is highlight Darius Fleming on the edge, one-on-one, -on -one, figuring McBurst is a better athlete than Fleming. Third and long for the Boilermakers. Marv rolling to his right. They roll the pocket with him. Now 
trying to get what he can. Nobody open. Good coverage downfield. He dives short of the 35-yard line and short of the first down. Tackled by Manti Teo. Now, a young quarterback doesn't often see a wide-open receiver when he's on the move. And what's going to happen is they're going to roll the pocket. It's called a dash. He's going to roll the pocket this way. Watch Smith sitting right over here as he rolls out beyond the tackle box. Now, Smith is going to sit it down right there. you got to throw the football. That's a first down. Keep your eyes down the field when you're scrambling. That's something a veteran quarterback would have picked up. Carson Weeks is on the punt on fourth down. Armando Allen deep for Notre Dame. Fair catch called for by Allen, and he makes it at the 15-yard line. That punt by Wiggs covered 50 yards. And so Notre Dame takes over at the 15 and a scoreless first quarter. Get live scores and news sent right to your iPhone. Uh, iPhone and iPad Touch users can watch live NBC Sports coverage of Notre Dame home games. And to find out how, you can text the word Irish to 51515. Message and data rates apply. So you get live scores and news sent right to your phone. Well, Purdue picked up about 20 yards on the exchange of punts. Notre Dame takes over at the 15. Chris sets it up to Riddick. And Riddick on a little screen uh, got about five yards. You know, Riddick's an interesting guy. Last year, as you know, covering Riddick was a running back, explosive guy. And when Brian Kelly comes in here with that offense, spread the wide receivers, they needed guys that can play in space. Riddick is one of those guys. They convert him to wide receiver. Fake the handoff. Toss it to Rudolph. And Kyle turns ahead for an Irish first down. Holland and Williams hanging on, trying to get the big man 6'6", 265 to the turf. And I guarantee if you're Charles Williams, you don't want any part of this guy coming under. Now 15, Charles Williams going to go tackle 265. Hang on, wait for some help. Joe Holland helps him get him down. First down, Notre Dame. Allen, ball. And the ball comes loose. And as they dive forward, it looks like Allen got back on it. They better get help for T Taylor Dever on Kerrigan. He is so quick off the ball. Remember, they're going front side again, and now what you have to do is two things. You've got to chip them, and you also have to misdirect them because he's coming so hard on the back side. You've got to work and use, make him use that against him. Boy, is he relentless. Chris, swing pass to Allen. Armando hit at the 30-yard line, got a short gain on the play of a yard or so with Charlton Williams wrapping him up for Purdue. Thomas, they're going to throw the ball here. I think they've got an opportunity to get a little bit more vertically down the field instead of just the check down. They had Theo Riddick earlier. He dropped one. T.J. Jones caught one. I think the curls and digs are open against these four defensive backs that have never played college football before. Brian Kelly calls the plays. Chris. Crossing to Rudolph, who's tackled short of the first down. Good coverage by Purdue as the big fellow caught it, but Holland had a hold of him immediately. Same thing again. It's a clear inside receiver, the big fellow. Kyle Rudolph, here he is. Boom, right across. Nice job by Joe Holland driving on the route. He read the eyes of the quarterback. Tom, I call that zone eye. Great job by Holland. So Ben Turk punts it to Keith Smith, who calls a fair catch and makes it at the 29-yard line. Ben Turk with a 35-yard punch and no return. So Purdue, three and out on their first possession. Back onto the field, and Robert Marv, who had an interesting career at the University of Miami, he broke... Tim Tebow's records in Florida high school ranks was highly touted as he went to the University of Miami. Started 11 games as a freshman in 2008, but had some off the field problems, some academic problems. Transferred to Purdue and making his first start today since 2008. Handoff on first down to Jared Crank. Crank who comes in uh, when they have a fullback position gets the carry. The uh, Purdue spread, a bit of a hybrid sometimes. They will, we saw them uh, in I formation under center. We saw Crank, a fullback on the field, getting that carry. Yeah, I think they really missed Ralph Bolton for an ACL. They've got two or three guys in that backfield that now are trying to replicate what he did as one man a year ago. Under center, Marv, this time. And you were impressed, too, with Bolden's pass protection. So, again, they roll the pocket and deliver it to Keith Smith. 
And Smith, who led the Big Ten in receptions last year with 91, catches this one for the initial Purdue first down. They moved by Jamar Slaughter. Love to roll the pocket. Inside receiver. It's a bootleg. The guard pulled in front. Real good job, Marv, getting the edge. Athletic kid again. If you can get him on the edge, especially with an offensive lineman like Justin Pierce in front, that's a win for the offense. 13 yards on that catch by Smith. Here's Crank again. One yard up the middle. Notre Dame ready for that run. Of course, the uh, defense against the run was sometimes a problem for the Irish last year. As we look at our Adidas starting lineups, here's the Purdue offense. And left tackle Dennis Kelly, the most experienced offensive line. Flew 6'7", 360 at Giants. And Keith Smith, one of college football's top receivers, led the Big Ten last year with 91 receptions. Second down and long. Marv looking to the sideline, getting a change of play call, perhaps. He's going to roll to the right. Fake the pass and ducked out of bounds. Looks like he'll be about a yard short of the first down. I like the decision, though. Instead of trying to throw it up for grabs, Marv does a real nice job. Again, young quarterback. Doesn't see what he wants to the left. He rolls to his right. There's a player down there, but he was covered both short and deep. Tuck it away. Pick up positive yards. And Tom, now you've got for third and one, a makeable third down situation. And they line up again in the eye. Durking is the tailback. Frank is the fullback. And it is Durking. Black is down as he stops short of the first down. There's a penalty marker. Danny Hope, the second year head coach of the Boilermakers, was the coach in waiting under Joe Tiller, took over last year, went five and seven, but had some momentum winning four of their last six, including a defeat of Ohio State. Illegal formation, five in the backfield. That penalty is declined, fourth down. So five in the backfield call against Purdue, brings up a fourth down. There's Danny Hope. One of his mentors at Eastern Kentucky University was uh, the great Roy Kidd, who's in the College Ho Football Hall of Fame. One double-A national champion on several occasions and a real legend. Interesting choice for Hope here. They decline the penalty Notre Dame does and sets up fourth and a little bit over one. Do you punt the ball, hope to get him back inside the 10-yard line, or do you go for it? And uh, Danny Hope conferring with his offensive coordinator, Gary Nord, it's a situation as a Notre Dame head coach, Brian Kelly, you almost have to think about taking that penalty even though it forces fourth down because you might want to get him back five or six because they're going to go for it. So on fourth and one, Danny Hope says let's go for it. And they send Robert Marr back out on the field. So fourth down and one. Big play here early in the game. Play action. Got to be play action. Fake it and get him on the edge. Again, the I formation under center. Marv. Play action fake. Rolls. Delivers. Caught for the first down. Nice call, Mike, as they got Durking out of the backfield for the first down. And, and it's a smart play because Durking can play fullback. He can play tailback. Here he is here. The play action comes. He's going to sneak out in the flat. Notre Dame has to commit to the run because it's fourth and one. Marv alertly picks it up. Dumps it off to Durking. That's a big first down, Danny Hope. So uh, Hope rolling the dice early. And it pays off as they have a first down now at the 38-yard line of the Irish. Score in his first quarter. Quarterback draw. Marv. Got away from one tackle and took it to the 35-yard line, gain of about three. Our Adidas starting lineups for the Notre Dame defense. Perhaps a, a successful season in the hands of this defense as they move to a 3-4. And those guard Ian Williams all important in that 3-4. Manti Teo following one of the most successful freshman seasons in Notre Dame history, leading the linebackers. And uh, Harrison Smith at the safety. And uh, Darren Walls probably... And the uh, quarterback spot is key, as you saw Bob Diaco, the defensive coordinator. Boy, Brian, yeah, Brian Smith blitzing off the edge. Great job with the tackle, forcing the ball out of his hand. And that's really a good job. Watch 58 come off the edge here. Right here, it forces a man-to-man -man situation. They're going to get rid of the football quickly to the hot receiver. Notre Dame knows that. The tackle immediately by Manti Teo. Thomas, that's a good job team defense. 
So third down and six now for the Boilermakers. No score. Just under five minutes remaining opening quarter. There's the look at Teo, one of the best freshman linebackers in Notre Dame history and one of their best defensive recruits ever signed up from Hawaii. Mar with time. Throws it and it's intercepted. Picked off by Darren Walls. Wow. He, Darren Walls laid in the weeds here. Beautiful job in cover two. Redirected the receiver. Came back under, made the play. Notre Dame. Die ball game. Darren Walls making the big play. He's got to redirect number one and then watch for number two and number three for an outbreaking route. Keep your eyes on the quarterback. He sits in wait. He's waiting in the bushes. The young quarterback takes the bait, and Darren Walls makes the first real big play of this game. Third career interception for Darren Walls. He's been mentoring Manti Teo, Manti told us, on his pass coverage. So Notre Dame takes over, 16-yard line, and a handoff to Sierra Wood. And Wood with his first carry of the season. Knocked out of bounds by Logan Lake after a 15-yard jaunt. A sophomore from Oxnard, California, who did not play last year. It's not always that a center can snap the football and get back out front. Watch Braxton Cave right here in the middle of your screen. Snap the ball, get out front, look at the cut block, and that opens it up for Sierra Wood, who can fly. First down, Irish. Another hand off to Wood. Coming the other way. And another big game for the Irish. Sierra Wood with his first two career carries has gone for 31 yards total. 16 on that one. Wow. And look at the ball right there. Cave again. Big number 59, Chris Stewart. And Sierra Wood is the guy they want with the ball in his hands with space. He's electric. Irish moving. That time. Would, would get no room as uh, Kawana Short comes in to make the tackle for the Boilermakers for a loss of five. There's a look at Ryan Kerrigan, third in the nation in sacks last year. He has 21 career sacks. And the linebackers and uh, the secondary, big question mark with a lot of inexperience, but talent. Rudolph again presenting the big target to Dave Chris, catches it at midfield. Joe Holland hits him after a nine-yard game. Yeah, I like that call after the lost play. You just get about half of it back. Clear, get him out. Now come back underneath, catch the football. We haven't heard from Michael Floyd, mostly because they're playing a soft and deep zone right now, and they're trying to work Rudolph underneath. Now you got a chance here for a single high safety. Look down here. That's your mismatch. Chris with Wood next to him. Hands it to Wood. Shake and then dives inside the 35-yard line. Another Irish first down. Albert Evans covers him after 13 yards. Three carries, three big chunks of yardage for Sierra Wood. And I mentioned Michael Wood. Watch him. He's not a receiver on this play, but Michael Floyd right here on the defensive back. Charles Williams blocks him all the way to the sidelines, opens up a hole for Sierra Wood, and that's a big improvement in his game. He's willing to block this year. Boilermaker 34-yard line. Irish first down. Chris slant caught by Camara. Duval Camara with his first season's catch. And has a first down. That's a game of 12 for Camara, the senior from Jersey City. The double slant. Camara gets inside leverage against the defensive back. Makes the play against Urkel. Yeah, Brian Kelly's spread offense is percolating now. First down at the 22 of the Boilermakers. Chris looks like he might be changing the play. And off, Armando Allen. Allen trying to use Floyd's block. Dives! For the touchdown! His offensive philosophy for this spread, no huddle, is score points. They just scored the first as Kelly hit coach. And Devere did a great job with the down block. It was read correctly by Allen. A poor angle by the safety, Max Charlotte, and Armando Allen made him pay. David Ruffer will attempt the point after. 
It is up and three. Armando Allen using the block downfield of Michael Floyd. There's Floyd with the block. Dive for the end zone. Seven, nothing else. Go to Notre Dame Extra on NBCSports.com where you can see all the action, including an online-only bonus camera, in-game highlights, plus live coverage of the halftime band. Go to NBCSports.com today. Well, David Ruffer ready to kick off with McBurse and Durking deep for the Purdue Boilermakers. There's a look at Durking. His dad, Scott, was an NFL running back for eight years. Dan is a senior. Illinois, Ruffer's boot. Hits it about the one and bounds into the end zone for the touchback. Purdue's ball now trailing 7-0 after the Irish get the interception from Walls. Then seven plays, 84 yards. Allen with a touchdown. Tom Hammond, Mike Mayock at Notre Dame Stadium. Our first down line today brought to you by Xerox as Purdue takes over. Now trailing 7-0. up about eight yards on the play. One thing we've seen from Robert Marv early is that mobility that his coaches described to us earlier this week. Two back, under center. They pull the backside guard, Pierce again, and look how open Pierce is. He has nobody to block. He almost goes downfield. There's nobody to block. Notre Dame's got to shore themselves up on the edge against Bootleg. Second down, about two. From the eye, it's McBurse. Al Tariq McBurse. Short of the first down. It's going to be about third and one coming up. You know, Darius Fleming does a great job. Watch him collapse it down here. And then the linebacker, Carlo Calabrese, with a run fit. He'll take it on. There's the collapse, the run fit, and the tackle for no game. That is how you draw it up in the 3-4. Calabrese, the sophomore from Verona, New Jersey, getting his first career action. Third and one from the gun. Marv rolling to his left. Sees some open territory and dives at the first down marker. Looks like he has it. He does. First down, okay. Purdue, as Marv on the run picks it up. And, Tom, you called that exactly right. It, so far, offensively for Purdue, it's been all about him on the edges. And the, the first downs they made, you remember from the last drive before the interception, Fourth and one, play action, first down. Everything's been about him on the edge. And they've got to find some other kind of offense where Notre Dame's going to make an adjustment real soon. First down, Purdue 31. Pitch it to McBurse. Can't get the edge. Nice play by Gary Gray on that quarterback spot as he came up to stop McBurse. In his tracks. And the court did really a good job by the corner. He read the crack back block. You're going to see Gary Gray on the misdirection call. There's the crack back. His job is to, when he sees the crack back, he's got to fill and support. Not only did he fill, but he made the one on one tap. And that will be the final play of the first quarter. Gary Gray already with five tackles for the Notre Dame defense as the first quarter comes to a close with Notre Dame leading Purdue 7-0. We'll return to Notre Dame Stadium after these messages from your local station. You're watching Notre Dame football on NBC. Start the second quarter. Notre Dame leading 7-0. If you thought the first quarter went by quickly, it did. Uh, only one incompletion on each side. Marr, 5 of 6. The one incompletion was, of course, an interception. And Dane Chris is at 8 of 9, including his last 8 in a row. Handoff to Edison. And Tavian Edison takes the handoff. Picks up about 4 yards. What an aggressive fill by Darren Walls. I'm really impressed so far by the play of the two corners. Gary Gray, Darren Walls are both supporting the run tremendously well. And remember, in the 3-4 defense, they should not be able to run the football wide. As we said, going to break there, Gary Gray already with five tackles, so they are indeed supporting the run. 
Third down and six. Nine personnel in the game. Marr stepping up. Nowhere to go. Looking downfield and launching it downfield. It's almost intercepted. Intended for Justin Stiller. Stiller had great coverage, though, and Jamar Slaughter looked like he got a call on the ball. Couldn't hold on. Third and long is a difficult. Now, this is the two-deep shell. They have half the field each, and then underneath, all the receivers are covered man-to-man -man underneath. So when you're a quarterback looking to get seven-plus yards on third down, you've got to get it down the field. Everybody's covered up. He's forced to scramble wide. This is where he's dangerous. Notre Dame makes a play. So Wiggs will punt, and it's a short punt off the side of his foot. Not a good punt. Goes out of bounds at about the 44-yard line. 21 yards on the Wiggs punt. Well, time now for our Northwestern Mutual doing the right thing. And doing the right thing if you're a wide receiver is not only catching the ball, but blocking. And when you're an All-American wide receiver who's used to catching the ball, you're doing the right thing when you block for your teammates in the run game. Look at them right there. Are you kidding me? That is beautiful. I like the fancy graphic better. That's nice. Takes the cut inside. And then on the touchdown run by Armando Allen, who's down the field making the key block on number 10, Mike Ergel. But the All-American, Mr. Floyd. Northwestern Mutual doing the right thing. Floyd has yet to catch a pass, but has made two nice blocks. Armando Allen, tough sledding up the middle, a couple of yards. Kind of interesting here, Thomas, on that last touchdown drive. Eight passes, 11 runs overall. They continued that on the touchdown drive. We're seeing that balance that we talked about in the open. Instead of a pass-happy spread attack, I think Brian Kelly's adapted to his personnel. He's running the football. Blitz shown by Purdue. And Chris able to escape. Dan Christ has a first down as he ducks out of bounds. Carlton Williams forced him out after a gain of 11 on a scramble by Dane Christ. Good job by Chris. They're going to bring Albert Evans, the safety, and he gets picked up by Armando Allen right there. Look at the hole. Chris sees it, alertly takes it over. Remember, forget the ACL. We talked about his athletic ability, and that's a young quarterback seeing the opportunity and taking advantage of it. I'm wearing a knee brace today after the ACL injury on Halloween of last year against Washington State. Stands in the pocket this time and delivers a strike to Floyd. And Michael has his first reception of the season. It's good for 20 yards. Doing the right thing again, huh? Michael Floyd, top of the screen right here. We've been throwing underneath, and Notre Dame says, and now we're going to go over top. Makes a good play. That's a big-time catch by Official, Michael Floyd. Officially a 19-yard gain, and Brian Kelly, when he initially came to Notre Dame, said well, Floyd was okay, but not all that great. And he said when he went to camp this year, this summer, he changed his mind. Here's Armando Allen shaking tacklers close to the 10-yard line where Logan Link stops him. Big Chris Stewart pulling out from the left guard position, 350-plus pounds, gets up in the hole. Stewart. The law student, believe it or not, gets the block on the edge. Allen runs through the arm tackle, and they've got it going on the ground. And if you let them run the football, Tom, this is going to be a dangerous football team. In the first uh, series that Sierra Wood came in, he had 16, 15, 15-yard 15 gains, sandwiched around a five-yard loss, helped get the Irish on the board in that touchdown drive previously at the end of the first quarter. Chris. Again, forced to tackle him, not until, though, Armando had gained seven yards. This time they pull the right tackle, comes down the line of scrimmage. Watch the cut in the hole right there. Nice block by Dever. The cut in the hole, north and south. And again, Notre Dame's got it going, and it's the ground game that's key in the whole thing. From the four-yard line, second down and three. Chris keeps it. And hit hard at the five. Well, you know, you hadn't been hit after that ACL injury all spring, all camp. So there's a hit, and he bounces up. So I guess uh, he will have complete confidence in that knee now. And, and you know, good defense and did a great job keeping backside contained. Because Notre Dame thought they had him flowing so hard, the misdirection would work. But good to stay home. So third down and four. 
Good protection. Lost it for his tight end, but over his head. Rudolph, of course, that big target in the end zone at 6-6, but uh, that time Chris singled it over his head. I think he wanted Michael Floyd top of the screen, one-on-one -on -one right here. Charles Williams does a great job. He's got to throw the ball underneath the Rudolph, and to be honest with you, I think he had him. I think he could have made that throw, and it was a little bit too conservative throwing it away. So a rougher will attempt a field goal from 22 yards. He hit all five of his attempts last season. This 22-yard attempt is good. So the Irish extend their lead. 11:09 left, second quarter, 10-0 Notre Dame. Notre Dame football is brought to you by Inc., the new business card from Chase. Make your mark with Inc. By E-Trade, investing unleashed. And by Bud Light, it's the sure sign of a good time. Here we go. Beautiful campus, the University of Notre Dame, the Golden Dome, the Basilica. And just across the campus at Notre Dame Stadium, celebrating its 80th anniversary of the season, David Ruffer has the ball teed up and ready to kick off after the Irish get a field goal from Ruffer's toe. Durking and McBurse are the... Kick this time from Ruffer, taken by McBurse. Put it up the four yard line and hit immediately. Good special teams coverage by the Irish. And that was uh, Bennett Jackson who made the special teams tackle. I love that. Well, the spread offense has been a running offense for Notre Dame so far. Yeah, they're averaging 6.8 yards a carry, and we referenced it in our open. I think Brian Kelly believes that the interior of his offensive line is big and talented, and that he's got three really good tailbacks, so why not run the football? Purdue starts from the Boilermaker 13. Mar on target. Caught by Keith Smith, short of the first down. We had a chance to talk to Keith Smith earlier this week in uh, West Lafayette. And what a delightful guy he is from Fort Hood, Texas. His dad, a retired Army First Sergeant. And uh, didn't know much about Purdue before he got there. He's become one of the best receivers in their history. Here's Marr getting it to Smith again. And Keith Smith will have the Boilermaker first down. Smith, who went to Shoemaker High School in Fort Hood, and like most of the people in Fort Hood, touched by the tragic shooting there. Some of his high school people, he said, had friends involved, and relatives involved. He's uh, caught a pass now in 25 straight games, and a big group in the community center back in Fort Hood watching him perform today. And Durkin on the draw play lowers his head and picks up a Purdue first down to the 40-yard line. That's a 13-yard jump. And notice the physicality at the end of the run. This is what Purdue wants to be. They get a good double team block on the edge. Durkin reads it correctly, drops the pad level, runs over Moda at the end of the run. And notice they're in their no huddle too, trying to change the tempo. Again, it's Keith Smith. And Smith, the converted quarterback, tackled by Gary Gray. You know, I'm a big believer. I don't care what level. you got to get the football to your playmakers. And, and for Purdue, it starts with Keith Smith. And against good competition last year, look at the numbers. Notre Dame 11. Ohio State 12 catches. I thought he dominated Ohio State in that game in the upset win. At Michigan 11. And Michigan State 15. Receptions 152. You've got to find ways to get him the football. He has three receptions on this drive. Draw play to Edison. Carrying tacklers with him and stopped uh, half a yard short of the first down. Kind of interesting. Edison is a wide receiver lining up in the backfield. And remember, with Ralph Bolton out of the game, they're looking for answers at the tailback position. So they're taking a wide receiver who they think is a playmaker, Antavian Edison, and they're lining them up at tailback because they need somebody back there that can make a play. Third down and a yard just short of midfield. Marv to the sideline to get the play call. Tom, they've been all play action out of the I-4 
variation on key plays now. It'll be interesting to see if Notre Dame recognizes that and tries to shut the edge down. Edison is the tailback. Marv rolling again. Delivers and a nice throw on the run and a nice catch by Kyle Adams is tight end. Marv let it go without setting his feet. It's good for seven yards and a Purdue first down. And Notre Dame brought Jamar Slaughter. That was the right call, expecting the play action fake. Outbound, a great job both by the quarterback and throwing the ball off his back foot and the catch by Captain Kyle Adams. So Marv keeps his drive going in the shotgun this time. Irish show blitz. Get it in the hands of Edison again, and Edison finally brought down. After he danced his way short of the 40, Jamor Slaughter, who's known as a big hitter in that Irish defense, the junior from Stone Mountain, Georgia, makes the tackle. And I don't even care that Manti Teo didn't make the tackle in space there because he got there so quickly, he forced Edison back inside, and Slaughter made the tackle for only a two-yard game. So second and eight, our first down line brought to you by Xerox. Corner blitz coming off the edge right here. Marv again rolls where he's been so effective. Got a good block behind and then overthrew it. Just a little high for Keith Smith. Perfect play call with a corner blitz with Blanton coming off the edge. Rolling away from it. You've got an opportunity to make a play. Gary Nord over there with Marv getting him the play call. Nord who... Got his uh, teeth cut under Howard Schnellenberger, who's still going strong. Isn't he really? FAU, Louisville, Oklahoma, the guy's been everywhere, and winning teams tend to follow. Both the Danny Holt and Gary Nord, former Schnellenberger assistants. Big play here. Third down. And... Play blown dead on third and eight. A timeout, a late timeout by Purdue. So Purdue avoids a delay of game by calling the timeout, trailing by 10. And coming up Thursday night, it's time to get back to football as the Super Bowl champion Saints take on the Minnesota Vikings. Then next Sunday, Sunday night is football night as the Cowboys head to Washington to face the Redskins. NFL kickoff weekend begins this Thursday at 7.30 Eastern, only on NBC. Taylor Swift, he had a brief shot there on the sideline, will be part of the pregame uh, entertainment. And uh, she has a brother that goes to Notre Dame. She's down on the sideline here today for the Brian Kelly opener again. Purdue and Purdue facing that third down and eight, trailing by ten. They're at the Irish 42 yard line. No down line, and it's a muddled defense. Look at this, nobody is in a stance. And, and the handoff goes to Durkin, and it was Rob Henry, I believe, at quarterback to hand it off. And Harrison Smith finally makes the tackle after Henry came into the game with the timeout and hand it off to Durking for a first down. And Notre Dame in that muddled defense, walking around, trying to create confusion, expecting a pass. What do they do? They run the football. Great blocking up front. Durking, the season, the senior captain, takes advantage of it. 14-yard gain. Henry remains a quarterback, a redshirt freshman from Ocala, Florida. Still has it. <laughs> That's why he's in. We're going to see him run the football, Tom. Down to the 19-yard line. That's pretty interesting. A change of pace. They've decided to run the football with him. Fake. Everybody comes down. It's a one-on-one -on -one situation on the edge with number 94 of Peace Williams. And the better athlete usually wins. In that time, it was Henry. Gain of nine yards for Henry. 6'2", 200 pounds. Here's what he did at Trinity Catholic High School in the Ocala, Florida area. Another quarterback draw. And he's to the 15-yard line, and he moves the chains again. It, it's interesting. It's obvious what they're trying to do here. Justin Pierce, the left guard. This is a quarterback run the whole way. This whole package of plays is set up to change the tempo and get the quarterback. When you involve Tom, the quarterback in the run game, you're trying to outgap the defense. It's one more def offensive player that they're not prepared to defend. Purdue coming with a little uh, Tim Tebow light. You're exactly right from the Florida area. Low snap, he picked it up, runs again. And 
Notre Dame stacks him up, but he keeps pounding away, doesn't he? He's a big, strong kid now. Red shirt freshman. He looks a little bit like Debo standing back there, right? Meanwhile, Marv on the sideline with uh, Gary Nord is going to come back in. Really nice job by Henry, the red shirt freshman, coming in, changing the tempo. Getting involved in the run game, and all of a sudden, Purdue in a key, key series, Tom down with the 12-yard line. Second down and seven from that point. And Marv will be in the shotgun. Smith is out wide in the one-on-one situation. Here comes the safety. Edison went in motion. Marv again rolls, slant, caught. Keith Smith. Tackled at the 10-yard line. Minimal gain on the play. Going to bring up a third down for the Boilermakers. People wonder why Manti Teo is so good. And he's getting better and better in the pass game. Watch Teo right here. He's going to flash to the to the pass before the ball is ever out of Marv's hands. Look at him. He feels it. He sees Smith come. He beats the block. He doesn't make the tackle, but he slows the play down. That's the second time he hasn't made a tackle, but he really made the play. Third down and five. Edison lines up the tailback. Marv under center. Edison the handoff. Spins away from one man and is tackled short of the first down by Gary Gray. The unblocked defender, and you called it exactly right, Tom. Good block by Durking. It leaves a one-on-one -on -one with the running back. And Gary Gray makes the play. Another defensive back. Look down here. Durkin with the block. And watch him come up and make a tackle. Don't drop your head, Gary. You almost missed it. So fourth down and three. And Wiggs is on to attempt the field goal. 25-yarder for one of the best place kickers in the college game. Wiggs trying to get Purdue on the scoreboard. And he does. So Purdue using a, a little trickery. Some unexpected plays from the Boilermakers. They go down the field against three. It's 10-3 Irish. Mercedes-Benz presents Army versus Notre Dame top performances. 1933, the cadets marched into Yankee Stadium looking to upend the Irish, and they got to a good start, jumping out to a 12-0 lead in the first half. But the Irish would fight back. A fourth-quarter blocked punt recovered for a touchdown by Notre Dame proved to be the difference. Irish 13, Black Knights 12. Top performances presented by Mercedes-Benz. Now talk about waking up the echoes as we go to Yankee Stadium for Army and Notre Dame. Echoes of the past in the brand new Yankee Stadium. Looking forward to that one in November. Wiggs will kick it off to Riddick. Wood is also deep for the Irish. Short kickoff. Picked up on the hop by Sierra Wood. Then he has to retrieve it again. Spun down at the 25-yard line. A little ragged on that return by the Irish. Purdue gets on the board. They bring in a red shirt freshman quarterback. Rob Henry showing us he can run 10-3 Notre Dame. Coming up, the Discover Halftime Report. Jimmy Roberts in our New York studio. He'll be joined by Peter King and Mike Florio, and they'll discuss the quarterback situation in Pittsburgh with Rosslethberger, Leftwich, Batch, and Dixon. They'll take a look at how the Saints are gearing up to face Brett Favre and the Vikings on Thursday, and, of course, all the scores and highlights from the top 25, including Florida and life after Tebow. Dane Chris with a shuttle pass caught by Wood. And Wood will have the Irish first down. Ryan Kerrigan makes the tackle, and one of the reasons Notre Dame has had a touchdown and a field goal on their last two possessions after punting the first two is that they found a way to deal with Ryan Kerrigan. He's only had a couple of plays, and they were all in the first two series, and since then they've got the run game going, which takes him a little bit out of it from the pass perspective, and Sierra Wood in space is exciting. Got 11 yards on first down. Wood again. Nowhere to go that time. Give him about a yard. Gerald Gooden made the tackle from his defensive end spot. Hard to find two better defensive ends in college football than Gooden and Kerrigan. And Gooden's only about 235 pounds, but he's so athletic. Good in space and made a great hustle play on the other side of the line of scrimmage. And Kerrigan, of course, is one of the best there is. And from Muncie, Indiana. So Notre Dame means a lot to him. 
Eagles rivalry. That pass caught by Theo Riddick. Stops short of the first down. Good sure tackling by the Boilermakers. It was a seven-yard gain. Ricardo Allen, who is a true freshman, made the play for Purdue. Watch Dever handle Kerrigan here. Real good job from the inside out. Look how strong you have to be against Kerrigan. You've got to drive through the inside half of the body and take him past the quarterback. He's so darn relentless and so strong. One-on-one -on, -one on that kid is a long day, man. You've got to bring your lunch. And some confusion it looked like about the play coming in on third down and one. So Notre Dame takes its first timeout. 219 left in the first half. 10-3 Irish. Dean Christ and the Irish leading by seven, facing a third down and one. Christ under center. Quarterback sneak. And will be enough for the first down. Dean Christ already is over 100 yards passing today. 11 of 13 for 102 yards, and there he runs for the first down. And Brian Kelly telling us that the, the philosophy of this offense is to score points. I don't care whether it comes from from uh, rushing or from passing, and they look for balance. But today, the rushing game has been very potent for the Irish. Keep in mind, we're down to two minutes left in the first half. It shouldn't impact the Irish as they're no huddle by by nature. They'll snap it. Chris fires across the middle and on target for the catch. It was caught for 21 yards by T.J. Jones. Outside receiver, runs a little bit of skinny post. The ball comes to him. I'll tell you, those the defensive backs, Albert Evans is playing so deep there. Real good throw, good catch, and I like the timing. Second catch for the freshman from Gainesville, Georgia. Football American. Dan Andre, a former Notre Dame defensive end, T.J. Jones, the true freshman. Sierra <laughs> Wood, Dan Sierra Wood. A couple of yards to the 30. Clock down to a minute 15. Spend a lot of time looking over at the sideline here. Got to speed this thing up. Second and long. And it's intercepted? No, they say incomplete. Almost intercepted. It was Joe Holland, the linebacker, who nearly had the pick. Talk about zone eyes, watching the quarterback. Holland makes the break with the receiver. You can clearly see the ball hit the ground. But a great job by a linebacker opening his hips, running underneath the receiver, running a seam route. And I didn't like the pass a whole lot by Chris. You got to get that football up higher and out earlier. Third down and eight. Empty backfield for Chris. Chase from the pocket. As he rolls to his right, he throws in complete intended for Riddick. So fourth down now for the Irish with 49 seconds remaining on the clock. Empty set. I told you to bring your lunch if you got this kid. Another nice job by Dever running him past the pocket. Gets up. And now Ruffer will attempt a field goal on fourth down. It'll be a 47-yard attempt by David Ruffer. He hit a 22-yarder earlier. From 47, Ruffer sends it on its way. It is good! David Rumford, two for two on field goals in this first half as the Irish pad their lead to 13-3. We have 43 seconds till halftime, and don't forget the Discover Halftime Report coming up at intermission with Jimmy Roberts, Peter King, Mike Florio. Uh, highlights of top 25 teams in action today. And NFL news all coming up on our Discover Halftime Report. Ruffer officially given credit for a 46-yard field goal, which is his career long. And now ready to kick it off. That's Big Burst, who is deep with Durkin. Kickoff that bounces into the arms of McBurst, and who's 
twisted down immediately at about the 22 yard line. Good tackle. So the Irish special teams have looked pretty good today. That was a Bennett Jackson again with another special team stack. I love when I see those guys like that. Bennett Jackson, nobody in Irish nation even knows who he is, yet he's been two big tackles already in the first half on kickoff coverage. So Purdue now with 40 seconds until halftime. What's your philosophy here starting at your own 22? They're going to be conservative, I guarantee it, and they might try to get let Marv make a play in the intermediate area, but Notre Dame's done a great job with their soft shell defense. Marv rolling to his right. We've seen that a lot today, and he finds receiver Keith Smith. Notre Dame giving a little cushion, and Smith out of bounds after a 15-yard gain. And that's Smith's seventh catch of the day. You're going to see him work out like this, and a good job by Marv buying time for him to get the seam in the zone. There's the corner. He goes in between the corner and the safety. Good throw and catch. Marv's pretty adept at throwing uh, on the rollout, isn't he? That's where he's been most effective, Tom. Again, rolls to his right. Looking back left, nothing there, and then dumps it away. Stops the clock with 28 seconds. Good decision. Absolutely a good decision. And I kind of like what Danny, Ho what Coach Hope is doing here. And he's saying, all right, we're going to put the ball in Robert Marv's hands and give him an opportunity to make some plays. But I like what Marv did. Throw it away. Don't take a chance to give Notre Dame any more points before halftime. Danny Hope, the uh, Boilermaker head coach. A time for Marv. Goes in past Cortez Smith and incomplete. So third down now with 23 seconds left. Notre Dame corners are really well coached. Danny Hope, who was the head coach at Eastern Kentucky University for five years, won an OVC championship in 2007. He was a Purdue assistant, also an assistant at Louisville, Wyoming, Oklahoma. Born in Florida, but played at Eastern Kentucky University on a 1AA championship team, coached by Roy Kidd. Third down and 10. Rolling left this time. He just tosses it. Caught by Lindsey, one of his tight ends, who will be stopped short of the first down. Jeff Lindsey in his fifth season from Macomb, Michigan, with his first reception. Carlo Calabrese getting his uh, first action today. With the tackle, forcing him out of bounds or stopping him short of the first down. Really nice job rallying up to the football by that Notre Dame defense. Timeout with 13 seconds. Bobby Diaco, the defensive coordinator right there. You know, he's one of the more aggressive young coaches in college football. He was an all Big Ten linebacker at Iowa, North Jersey kid. I don't think he'd mind me saying he wasn't the most talented linebacker in the country, but he made himself into a Butkus semifinalist. And uh, he coaches the same way. You know, Tom, I enjoyed our meeting with him yesterday. He was so intense, man. Manti Teo was laughing about him, too. He said, boy, he really is an intense guy as, a, as his position coach as well. And I really do believe those defensive backs have been coached real well by Chuck Martin. They understand where the sticks are. Purdue trying to get a first down. The important to throw under, rally up, make a tackle. And now Purdue, with 13 seconds, has got to decide they got to kick the football here. And I was saying uh, earlier, don't you think that uh, if Notre Dame is going to have a successful season, the defense is going to have to play better? Have to play much better. And you've got a young quarterback, and Tom, that's where all the attention is. We all like to talk about quarterbacks, but. For me, at the end of the day, what's going to determine how good this Notre Dame team is they continue to develop on defense. Not ticking away. Now stopped at 13. It's interesting because Notre Dame wasn't sure what they were going to do there. They anticipated, and I still think they're going to try and get them to jump off sides here. 13 seconds. I don't, I don't think I like this here. Fourth down and two. Yeah, this is yeah, the all this time. Uh, well, let's see. 
And it's going to be a five-yard penalty anyway. <laughs> For the wrong team, right? Offense, <laughs> number 72, five yards. We're down the range. Trying to get a penalty, but again, not against that team, right? So five-yard penalty for false start. Justin Pierce, the left guard, tight end. Watch, good release by the tight end. I thought you did a good job with exploding out of there. Just a, just a little low early there, Tom. So now it's Wiggs in punt formation. Armando Allen. Wiggs trying to kick it away from him. It does. Allen says uh, everybody stay away from it, and it takes a good pretty roll down to the 10 yard line with three seconds. Two now on the clock. 48 yard Wiggs punt. And now Notre Dame, one would expect just to take a knee and go to the halftime locker room with a 13 3 lead. Good punt by Wiggs there. Not, not only did it get down as far as it did, but it also ate up a lot of clock. And he made sure it was away from Allen, so they got no return. Yep. Amazing how they do these things for a reason, huh, Tom? <laughs> well, Brian Kelly's first half has been a success anyway. First half as the Irish head coach, a man that's been a successful coach at Grand Valley, at Central Michigan, at Cincinnati. Now taking over the Irish and in his first half at Notre Dame Stadium is Irish lead Purdue by a score of 13 to 3 as we go down to Alex. Well, Coach, how do you assess your first half? Yeah, you know, I, I thought, um, you know, defensively we came up big, you know, keeping them off the, the board relative to a touchdown. You know, a little inconsistent in the first couple of drives. I thought we got, you know, started running the ball, uh, which, you know, again, from our standpoint is very important. How do you continue to adjust for their defensive ends, especially number 94, Ryan Carrion? Well, you know, they're very good. We knew that. You know, we're trying to chip. You know, we're trying to keep a tight end on them a little bit. And, and uh, you know, Dane can move his feet. So if we can do that, we should be okay. A bit of a learning process for you and Dane. You've been talking to him a lot on the sidelines. What have you been saying to him? Yeah, you know, sometimes he's trying to be a little bit too perfect. You know, go, go play. Get the ball out of your hand. Thanks, Coach. All right, Brian Kelly and the Irish leading Purdue at halftime 13 to 3. Plenty ahead. Stay tuned now for the Discover Halftime Report. Don't forget the halftime performances of the Purdue and Notre Dame bands at NBCSports.com. Now let's send you to Jimmy Roberts in our New York studio. And back inside Notre Dame Stadium, ready to start the second half with the Irish leading Purdue 13 to 3. David Ruffer will kick it off for Notre Dame. McBurse and Durking are the deep men for the Boilermakers. And Robert Marm awaiting his call to the field after putting up only three points in that first half. Ruffer blasts this one into the end zone where McBurse will bring it out. Stopped and stacked up by the Irish special teams at about the 20. So as we go down to the field now, check in with Alex. Hey, Tom, well, I spoke to Coach Danny Hope at the half. He seemed very encouraged about this second half. The one thing that he was very happy about in the first half was how well his offensive line was able to protect his quarterback, Robert Marv. Remember, a lot of guys, including Marv, have not played on this football field for a very long time. He said he's not counting his about 20 guys, though, that have never started. So he feels very encouraged that they got some good experience under their belt in the first half and feels encouraged that they can get the offense going a little better in the second half. Part of the protection of Marv was uh, rolling that pocket, usually to the right. This time he stands in the pocket and feels the pressure. Chased from it and knocked down to the five yard line by Captain Lewis Moore. 15 yard loss. Alex gives us that report in the first place of sack. And you know, Ian Williams, the nose tackle, pushes the pocket tremendously well. Here's Catherine Lewis Moore. Look at the strength to get underneath the left tackle, Dennis Kelly. And here is the nose tackle, Ian Williams, one of the top nose tackles in the country. He forced the play back towards Catherine Lewis Moore. That's the key to rushing the quarterback. Dangerous territory now for Purdue. Marr rolling to the right in the end zone, being chased. Unloads the ball and it's caught out to about the 15-yard line. 
Kyle Adams presented himself as a target, and Marv found him for eight yards. And Bobby Diaco recognizes different launch points and that they're moving the pocket. So what's he going to do? He's going to bring that outside linebacker off the edge for contain. Gary Neal, number 56, gets off the block by Durkin, forces the play. Good job by Marv just to make a completion, make something out of nothing. And now you got a chance third to about 15 or 16 to try and get a first down. Deep in their own territory at the 14-yard line. The Boilermakers facing a crucial third and long. And again, no nickel. They're trusting Perry Neal without a nickel. Marr steps up. Pops. But only back to about the original line of scrimmage. Actually at the 21-yard line. And Purdue will have to punt from deep in their own territory on their first possession of the second half. Uh, Carlo Calabrese staying in in that situation. Third and long and making the tackle on Durkin. Doesn't surprise me that Diaco likes a guy by the first name of Carlo. Throws it underneath, breaks on the quarterback before he threw the football. He broke on his eyes, drove on the football, made the short tackle. Yeah, that's that New Jersey okay. Italian exactly. connection. Here's a low line drive. Armando Allen fields it at the 30 off the foot of Riggs. And a nice return for Armando Allen. Cut back his block as well. He's all the way down to the Purdue 30 yard line. 49 yard punt and then Allen carries it back 40 yards on the return. And Harrison Smith almost pushed in the back. Watch it right down in here. Stays off. Not called and Armando Allen picks and weaves his way through. Makes people miss. Picks up key blocks down the field. And all of a sudden, Notre Dame with holds three and out. Big punt return. Thomas Ball on the 30-yard line. So the Irish begin the second half at the 30-yard line of Purdue. Sierra Wood in the backfield as Dane Crisp hits Michael Floyd. Dane and Floyd is about just short of the first down. Interesting where they lined Michael Floyd up. They've got the flexibility in the spread to line him up in different locations. Out wide in the first half, they really didn't throw the football to him. So what do you do? You move him in inside of trips. Now you create a matchup nightmare. Who's this, a linebacker? I don't think so. Not happening. Second down. Wood. Sierra Wood, one man to beat. To the 10-yard line, first down Irish. 13-yard game for Wood. Logan Lake went one-on-one -on -one and made the tackle for Purdue. They've got the run game going, and look at the big center again. Braxton Cave pulling out to the second level, getting a block on the linebacker. Sierra Wood and Armando Allen are doing a great job in the run game. For Wood, that's his fourth carry over 10 yards. Dane Chris. Faking the handoff to Riddick, keeps it. And he's inside the 10 yard line. Got a couple of tough yards, took another hit. Chris Carlino delivered it for the Boilers. Chris Carlino making a play, I remember a year ago. In the Purdue game, Carlino playing. Chris made a block on him. Made a little block on him. Earned the respect of his teammates. He sure did. Again, out over the ball. You're going to flex out your big tight end wide here. Second down and goal. Swing it. Nice catch made by Wood. Twisted to the turf at the five-yard line by Albert Evans. Tom, you just mentioned the block from last year. Now, here it is. Wildcat. Look where your quarterback is. All of a sudden, he recognizes the bounce. He's going to hunt down Carlino, put the big hit on him. And number 23, Golden Tate, walks into the end zone. That was at Purdue last year when the Irish pulled out a 24-21 victory. Now, did that young man light up when we talked about yeah. that yesterday? <laughs> Very proud. <laughs> Here's Chris standing in the pocket and throwing it into the end zone for T.J. Jones. And the freshman on his third career reception has the Irish touchdown. going to do is sit the two inside receivers down on the goal line. Here and here are going to sit on the goal line and then he's going to work in behind them. Jones has 
has to work for inside leverage, what, which is what he gets. And as soon as you beat that defensive back, Herbal to the inside, it's a touchdown. Ruffer for the extra point. And it's good. First touchdown in the career of T.J. Jones. All set up by the good punt return from Armando Allen. And the Irish, early in the third, lead it 20-3. Notre Dame football is brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. Begin building your foundation for life at NorthwesternMutual.com. By Verizon, the signal is yours. Wield it to transmit anything you want. Verizon. By Adidas. And by Xerox. With Xerox, you're ready for real business. Golden Dome shining in the September sunlight. Kind of unseasonably cool today. Very, very pleasant. Perfect afternoon for football in Notre Dame Stadium. With the Irish now up 20 to 3 and rougher to kick it to O.J. Ross, who's come in to return for the Boilermakers. He's a freshman. Ross gathers it in at about the five yard line. Makes a couple of moves, but can't get free. Ridden down short of the 25 yard line, where Purdue will take over. Brian Smith with a special teams tackle for Notre Dame. Give Mike Elston the special teams goes credit for Notre Dame special teams. The kickoff coverage has been outstanding. Special teams have been good all round for Notre Dame today. Washington turns has set up that touchdown. Yep, and Ruffer's been good on his place kicks. So just over 10 minutes to go, third quarter, first down for the Boilermakers at the 23 yard line. They need to get something going. Five or six yards on first down. Carlo Calabrese makes the Notre Dame hit. Calabrese from Verona High School in New Jersey, second team All State, was an All State quarterback, wide receiver, and linebacker on the state championship team. And as a senior, was New Jersey Defensive Player of the Year. Box pass caught for a first down by Justin Siller. That's Siller's first catch today, the former quarterback. Tackled immediately by Darren Walls, but it's a Purdue first down. So first down for the Boilermakers, and our first down line today brought to you by Xerox. Fumble. McBurst fumbled the handoff from Marv on the exchange between quarterback and running back. McBurst able to run back and get on it. Notre Dame going with a four-man front. Expecting pass some of their nickel and dime bad exchange right there between the quarterback who's trying to read that on his own read and McBurst. I like what McBurst did. Just jump on him and don't try and pick it up and go anywhere. But it makes second and 17 for Hope's offense. from the pocket right into the arms of a tackler. It was Ethan Johnson who was holding his ground and stood up the would-be blocker and the rush chased him right into his arms. Well, there is just tremendous coverage forcing Marv to hold on to the football. Snap right up front Ian Williams then from the side again. Pass protection to me is all about giving the guy a clean pocket. Notre Dame is starting to destruct that pocket. That work, the struck. It is good. No. Okay. How about the score? The third and 21. <laughs> Mar chased and sacked. Is that a fumble? Looks like it's still a live ball. Yes, touchdown. Catherine Lewis Moore. With no doubt. See if the ball is down or not. If the man is down or not. And the ball came free before he was down. Mark trying to make something out of nothing. Ian Johnson chasing him down. Where's the knee? Right there. He's down. And yeah. if the bar is, yep. I believe that's going to come back and create a fourth down situation right there. And how ironic is it? 
that Alex comes out with a report with Danny Hope, and the one thing he was most happy with from the first half was his pass protection. And Notre Dame has come down in the second half and gotten after that offensive line. Ian Johnson. Again, it's adjustments. Notre Dame has made some excellent adjustments on both sides of the ball today. Looks like that knee is down on our NBC it. NBC it. And uh, the replay officials, Nick Trainer and Michael Semcheski of the Big East, are having a look at it as we speak. Ian Williams and Ethan Johnson, the two Notre Dame people from their front three, applying the pressure. And you can see from that NBC at angle, what they have to have, though, remember, is conclusive evidence because it was ruled a touchdown. So beyond a shadow of a doubt, that knee has to be down with the ball still secure. Brian Kelly with some words for Dane Christ. Danny Hope hoping the review reverses what would be a touchdown for Notre Dame. Call on the field was a fumble and it's under review. As far as I'm concerned, this has got to be Purdue football. Yeah, fourth I'm down. surprised it's taking so long, really. And again, one more time. Right there's the knee. I don't see the football out until now. Oh, yeah. Well, any athlete's going to say I'm yeah. down, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> Whether he was or not, man, I'm down. In any event, uh, the rush has been dialed up by the Irish in this second half. Here's the call. After further review, the runner was down prior to losing the ball. They produced ball fourth down on the 14-yard line. Good job, Nick Trainer and the review officials. The, the correct call there. But again, Tom, you called it correctly as far as dialing up that defensive pressure. Last time it led to a punt return for Armando Allen. So all the momentum right now, this is a dangerous situation for Danny Hope's team. Fourth down, punting from your own end zone, all the momentum going with the home team. You've got to find a way to make a play. So Wiggs in punt formation, standing at the goal line. He's had an inconsistent day, some good ones and some not so good ones, including a 21 yarder at one point. And sends this one toward Armando Allen. It's a good one. Allen with a fair catch call made at the Irish 45 yard line. 40 yard punt gets Purdue out of a hole, at least temporarily. Irish take over with a 20 to 3 lead. Go to Notre Dame Extra on NBCSports.com where you can have full DVR control of today's game, including rewinding, pausing, and watching any of the action in slow-mo. Plus, after the game, you can watch an online-only post-game show. Go to NBCSports.com today. Well, the Irish take over and discounting taking a knee with a couple of seconds left in the first half. They've had touchdown, field goal, field goal, touchdown on their last possession. Mondo Allen. Mondo Allen. Chris getting his feet wet for the Irish today. He has had a good day. 15 of 19 with seven different receivers spreading the ball around for 138 yards and a touchdown. Very efficient day. No major mistakes. Second down. Chris hangs it up for Floyd. That flag is down. <laughs> That's Michael Floyd right there. Forget the flat. This is a big body wide receiver with a one on one situation with a freshman, 180 pound Ricardo Allen. And every time Michael Floyd's going to win this jump ball. Pass interference, defense number 21. Penalties decline. First down. Ricardo Allen. Really talented freshman corner, but this is a mismatch, folks. 6'3", 227. Good coverage, but that ball in the air, he's going to go get it every time. Way to control the football. He's a big-bodied wide receiver that's dangerous any time there's a one-on-one. -on -one. And I give Chris credit for reading, recognizing it, and getting rid of the football, giving his guy a chance to make a play. And Ricardo Allen, the freshman, at only 5'9", against Floyd, went for 34 yards. And off to Armando Allen, tackled by Gerald Gooden. 
Now, I really thought it was a telling comment. We mentioned it earlier about what head coach Brian Kelly said in training camp about his wide receiver, Michael Floyd. He was an All-American guy. He said, I really wasn't all that impressed on tape, but when we got here and worked with the kid, all he wanted to do was get better. So in the spring, he wasn't that impressed, but then in camp, he has been the hardest worker on the team, and he fumbled on his way to the end zone. Picked up by Purdue. Logan Lee. giving him all the props. That should have been a touchdown or at least a big play. He's out wide. The ball was put right on him. Here he is. He takes away. He eats it up. That should be a touchdown. Nobody really rips the ball no. away. He just loses it. So Floyd dropped what appeared to be a touchdown in the making. A turnover gives the ball to Purdue. Notre Dame commits this first turnover of the game while we were they took a look at it to make sure that Floyd had possession of the ball before he fumbled it. And then his rule the field, the ruling on the field stands. So Purdue takes over after the turnover. And the Boilermaker six. Marv under center with the I formation. Durkin is the tailback. Pitch to Durkin. Uses his blockers well, cuts up on another man and gets it out to a first down. That's a key run by Dan Durking before Zeke Mata makes the tackle as they get it out from the six-yard line for a first down. Yeah, and the right side of this line is going to pull and get the key blocks there. Kenny Blue and Nick Mondek. Good cut by Durking. He's a north-south tough kid who's going to lower the pad level and maximize runs. He's not going to make you miss but he's going to make the right cut and finish it. Right behind the block of Ken Plew, as we said, 6'7", and who knows, maybe 360. He's a giant of a man, but soft-spoken as we converse with him in West Lafayette. Durkin carries again with not as good a result that time before Carlo Calabrese makes the Notre Dame play. You know, Tom, I talked with Plew on the field before the game, and I went up to him, and I thanked him for his time, and I said, big boy, there is no way you're 340. And he started laughing, and he said, you're right, but I'm not telling anybody for the record. <laughs> but he was uh, an enjoyable, intelligent young man to speak with. And uh, can you imagine 6'7", 360 or so pulling and coming at you at full speed? Yeah, I can. <laughs> it's not good. Not a pleasant memory. <laughs> no, it isn't. Cortez Smith on the receiving end of that Marv pass before Darren Walls takes him down. It's third and short coming up for the Boilermakers. And, and Marv and Purdue are going to have to do a little bit more of that. And I know Notre Dame's playing that soft, too deep shell. They're not going to let them get over the top, but they've got to get a little bit more aggressive. It's a 20 to 3 football game. Don't want to get crazy, but they've got to start getting the ball down the field. And it starts with converting this first down. High formation. Crank, fullback, jerking tailback. Hand off to Gherkin. Got the first down and nearly broke it as he crosses the 30-yard line. Calabrese holding on by the ankles. Wow, what a collision with the fullback crank and the linebacker, Brian Smith. This is what football is about, folks. Watch right here, taking on a fullback right here. Isolation at block. Watch the hit. Bang! Are you kidding me? Big hit by Brian Smith. That's called compressing the fullback on ISO. Durking with 48 yards rushing. And gives them a first down. Take the handoff. Mar rolling, delivering, and another first down. This one to Frank, the fullback out of the backfield. He takes it for another Purdue first. Manti Teo chased him out after a 10-yard game. They really like bootleg. This direction, Justin Pierce will pull out in front. The fullback will slide into the flat. Nice job by Marv. And Tom, you've said it repeatedly today. He's very comfortable outside of the pocket. And that's where they're making most of their yards in the past game. Just under four minutes. Third quarter. The new driving. Drive started on their own six-yard line. Face and incomplete. Looks like it was Ian Williams. Boy, I like this kid. Defensive tackle, Ian Williams, 95. Get your hand up. If you can't get to the quarterback, elevate. 
He might only be 6'1", but he beats Justin Pierce. He gets in the throwing lane. And that's an underappreciated characteristic for defensive tackle. If you can, can get there, read the eyes, and get in the lane. Williams played against Marv in a Florida high school all-star game. Said he kicked their butt, didn't he? Yeah, that's what he said. <laughs> Here's Marv. He's standing. Pulls up, sets his feet, delivers it, and forward progress, I believe, is going to give him the first down. That's Cortez Smith. Marv doing a good job of making something out of nothing. Yeah, and the coaches stress how when everything breaks down, he's at his best. Cortez Smith comes in. Now he's waiting right at the first down mark. They're looking at him. He's huff. He's waiting. And I thought that Harrison Smith, who was reading the quarterback, number 22, might get in and make a play. Here's the athletic ability of Marv. He steps up. I like the eyes down the field, and I think he'll develop as the year goes on and get better and better at that. He's hit seven of eight in this second half. From the blitz. Opens up a, a lane to get to Siller, and Siller hard to bring down. He'll have a, another first down. Harrison Smith finally takes him to the turf. That's a good read there, because Moda's going to come off the edge right here. And what do they do? They come in right behind, which is the correct read, both by the quarterback and the wide receiver. You've got an outside leveraged uh, corner. Throw it inside. That's a blitz beater right there. The dude driving at the Notre Dame 32. Motion there up front. Ball start. Offense, number 72. Five yards. Down remains first. Guard Justin Pierce. Calls for the penalty. Fifth-year senior from Tom Bean, Texas. Had a little weight issue last year. He started a bunch of games in 07 and 08, and last year didn't get on the field as a starter. He was a little too heavy, and I, and I give Danny Hope and his offensive coordinator, Gary Nord, credit. They pull a lot of guys. They like misdirection. If you can't move in space, they don't want you as an offensive line. Mark now 8 of 9 in the second half for 68 yards. He's 21 of 27 for the game. Again, rolling to his right with a pocket rolling with his pass a little too tall that time. Intended for Frank. That's the play they ran a few moments ago for a first down. You got to throw that football earlier. That's an easy read. It's a half field read when you pull out. It's Justin Pierce again out front on boot. Same thing. He's going to pull out here. The fullback's in the flat. Give it to him right away. Look, he's on the edge already. Give it to him. One, two, three, four, five extra steps. And then even if he caught the football, he was out of bounds. Throw the football early. Make the read and get rid of it. Second down and 15. Draw play to Durkin. Durkin written Durkin down, down by Manti Teo. Bring up a third down and long for the Boilermakers. Tough kid, isn't he, Tom? Durkin, you mentioned his dad, New York Jets tailback, running back for eight years in the league. And I think this kid, Durkin, and he's a captain. He's a not, captain. Yeah, he's not a big name guy, but it tells you what his teammates think about him. Look at the others towering over him there. <laughs> That's a great look there. Cook can barely hold hand with him. He's so small. Okay, it's a tight bump set out there. Right here, you're looking for some kind of pick or run. Mark's pass, wide open, and the pass to Siller is good for the Purdue first down. Justin Siller came wide open before Teo got him the 15-yard gain. Both Siller and Keith Smith, former quarterbacks, and don't you say it helps them understand the game. Yeah, you run them off, and then you find the hole in the zone. If it's man-to-man, -man, you rub it, and if it's zone, you sit. Siller again. Can do him this time. Stopped at the line of scrimmage by Steve Filer. Good job in space by an outside linebacker one-on-one -on -one with Siller, the wide receiver and former quarterback. You know, that's a tough place to be. And again, they're not playing nickel. They're trusting their outside linebackers are athletic enough in space to make plays. And so far, Bobby Diaco's guys have been. Inside the final minute of the third quarter with Notre Dame leading 20-3. But the Boilermakers threatening, second down and 10 from the Irish 14. Tight punch again up top. Now rolls that way. Nobody putting pressure on him now. The 
Receivers downfield all covered. Nowhere for Barr to go with the football, and he's finally tackled by Brian Smith. When you roll the pocket like this and change your launch point, it helps the quarterback from a time perspective, but the defense expands with receivers. Really good coverage. The only possibility at that point was Edison, and it was too late the way he came over. So here's a huge third down now for the Boilers. Third down and nine from the Notre Dame 13-yard line. The 14th play of the drive that started at the six. Mars pass is caught inside the 10 and a nice move to get it a yard short of the first down. That was Durking again who's having a terrific game for the Boilermakers on what will be the final play of the third quarter. They're going to mark it just short of the first down, so it'll be a fourth down facing the Boilermakers when the fourth quarter begins. At the end of three, it's Notre Dame 20, Purdue 3. We'll return to Notre Dame Stadium after these messages from your local station. You're watching Notre Dame football on NBC. Fourth quarter about to unfold with Notre Dame leading Purdue 20 to 3, but the Boilermakers threatening with a fourth down and one at the Irish five yard line on a drive that began at the Purdue six yard line. Now fourth and one. Marr faked it. Goes for the end zone and it is deflected and intercepted. Intercepted on the deflection. It's Ian Williams. And instead of bootlegging, which is a misdirection, they go play action with the flow. So the flow is going to come this way, and the quarterback will roll towards the flow. Good coverage. Look at right here. That's Gray right there. Tips it up twice. And Ian Williams, 310 pounds, showing those ball skills, Tom. Big defensive play by the Irish. Notre Dame's Ian Williams with his second career interception, and now it's time for Valvoline, when probably doesn't cut it. Let me tell you, fourth and one down 17 probably isn't good enough. Marr throws it into traffic. Gary Gray double backs it. Ian Williams comes up with the play, and Robert probably doesn't cut it. If you're looking for a sure thing, Valvoline can guarantee your engine up to 300,000 miles. So the Boilermakers, 15 plays, 89 yards, about seven minutes off the clock, and come away empty. Uh -oh. They get a safety right there. That is a safety. Wow. And here's a big Ryan Kerrigan again. That play took way lo too long to develop. They're pinching off the edges. Kerrigan comes through untouched. Number 15, the corner, also comes in. Charles Williams. Armando Allen never had a chance. No, he didn't. That's a jailbreak right there. And all of a sudden, we got a ball game. 20 to 5. And free kick coming up. Purdue's going to get the ball back after they tackle Allen for safety. With our producer Rob Hyland and our director David Michaels, Tom Hammond, Mike Mayock, Alex Flanagan, Notre Dame Stadium, where the stellar defensive end of Purdue, Ryan Kerrigan, just made only his fourth tackle of the game, but it was good for a safety as they trapped Armando Allen in the end zone. And now Ruffer will kick it off on the free kick from the Irish from the Notre Dame 20. Dierking and Ross are the deep men. Squibs it, taken on a hop by one of the up men. And Purdue will take over at the 45-yard line. That was Derek Jackson that picked up the bouncing football and returned it to the 45-yard line as we take another look at the safety. When you're on your own one-yard line, inside gap control is critical. Watch what happens when both players go to the outside. Kurgan comes in and the guard doesn't to come out. All that is is really communications. Chris Stewart goes up to the second level. Zach Martin in the tight end. Kyle Rudolph double team and untouched is the All-American end. So first down Purdue handoff to Durkin. Three yards. So Purdue had the long drive nearly seven minutes off the clock. They did not score any points. Notre Dame takes over. They have it for four seconds. <laughs> and Purdue gets them for a safety. 
Purdue needs to take advantage of that momentum now with their offense. Brian Kelly, a little nervous. He had a chance to put this game away a couple times. First was the throw to Michael Floyd. Should have made it a 27-3 ball game. And then the offense down in tight makes a big mistake. Second down, blitz comes from Notre Dame. Keith Smith on the receiving end has a more than first down. Keith Smith catches another one. How many is that for him today? They, they catch it from Keith Smith. Darren Walls tackled it. The game was enough for a first down. That was his first catch. Keith Smith's first half catch of the second half. And why not go right back to it? Smith turns out another first down. If you're going to get a soft corner in today's college football spread offense, you're going to throw that hit all day. He attacked Robert Blanton that time, and our first down line brought to you by Xerox. Mars. E. Smith again. Do it till they stop it, huh? Well, yeah, and he's a big player. He's 6'2", 226. And he pushed off on Blanton that time, went up and contacted Blanton, and came back to the football. Why not? Second down about five. On the slant, this will be Cortez Smith. A yard short of the first. Cortez Smith, tackled by Anti Teo. Anti Teo. Credit for the hit. Four defensive linemen in the game. They're four best pass rushers, but they keep Teo in the game. Ryan Kelly telling us that Teo's pass defense has improved more than any other part of his game this offseason. And again, from the inside out, from the wide receiver bubble screen, he comes and makes a key play and sets up a third down. A little earlier, he told us that he'd been going to Darren Wallace for instruction on coverage. Finally handing it off to Durkin and did not get it. Marv kind of riding him like he was uh, prepared to pull the ball back, but left it in Durkin's. Uh, yeah, grasp. you're exactly right, Tom. And the high snap causes a little timing issue. He's reading back here, and when he sees Perry Neal, excuse me, Ryan Smith coming off the edge, he's going to get the football. All right, going for it, fourth down in the yard. Got man coverage all over the place. Take advantage of it. You got man coverage. Throw the football. Changing the play. Nobody in the middle of the field. This is an opportunity for a wide receiver to make a play. Mark was going to keep it. Made the play action fake. Takes it to the end zone for the touchdown. That's a penalty. That's a penalty. That dive into the end zone is going to cost them a penalty. As much as I love that, as much as I love the call and the play, that's a dumb play by, by Robert Mark. You're still losing. Football game. Watch everybody crash down on the fake. Remember, it's fourth down and one. Watch everybody crash inside. No contain by Brian Smith. The corner's been run off in man coverage, and that's an easy one for Mark. But come on, Robert, you know better than that. Here he comes again. He knows he's going to score. Let me tell you something. It's 20 to 11. You're down nine. There is absolutely no excuse for costing your team field position. So Wiggs will line up for the extra point. Wiggs will attempt the point after. And it is good. But they will assess the penalty for the kickoff. Robert Barr untouched in the end zone, but then the dive is going to cost him a penalty. safety and then they get the touch it's 20 to 12. Notre Dame football is brought to you by ADT Security Services always there by U.S. Bank all of us serving you U.S. Bank and by McDonald's I'm loving it. After the penalty, Wiggs will kick off from the Purdue 15 yard line. And this will be Sierra Wood at about the 19. Finds a seam, and Wood, what a great return, fumbles the football. And Notre Dame recovers.
Josh Johnson does a great job. 28 ripping the football. Sierra Wood has two hands on it, but you got to hold the football. Trying to get this football game away. Really good hustle by Zeke Mata. Zeke Mata recovering the fumble. Save the play for Notre Dame. Hmm. All the momentum had been produced way had they recovered that. <laughs> and look at the field position they get after the kickoff of the 15-yard line. That's right. That penalty on Marv cost Purdue dearly, and Notre Dame has it at the border 41. First down handoff to Allen. Armando bounces off tacklers, got a yard as we check in with Alex. Well, Tom, uh, the coaches on the Purdue sideline handled that penalty by Robert Marv pretty well. Uh, offensive coordinator Gary Nord actually met him right after it and started talking about the rest of the fourth quarter and the strategy while Coach Danny Hope came up to him and told him, you have one mulligan, and that was it. Remember, they <laughs> like this guy's swagger. You saw a little bit of it there. Uh, and after kind of a checkered career at Miami, he's been somewhat the model citizen in West Lafayette. Chris flushed from the pocket, trying to scramble, caught by the heels for a loss by Kawan Short. That's the uh, first sack of the day for Purdue. I like what Alex just had to say there. I thought that was interesting. And before the game, their head coach, Danny Hope, said, you know, I'm not a yeller and a screamer. I do that in practice. I want to see them just let it go out there during the game. But I promise you he'll hear about it when they watch game tape tomorrow. Third down and ten. let Chris in trouble. And sacked again. Two consecutive sacks. This one for the sack master, Brian Kerrigan. Great job picking up the blitz of Evans, but Kerrigan is just relentless. Blitz comes from the outside. Allen, great job, but look inside. Who's coming? 94, Ryan Kerrigan. We keep talking about it. he only has three tackles. He only has four tackles. Well, he stripped the ball from the quarterback in the first quarter. He's got a safety. He's got a couple sacks. I mean, to me, it's been a productive day, and they've been all over him with different blocking schemes. Impact. Yep, tackles. Keith Smith standing at his 10 as Ben Turk. Little pooch punt, and Smith will call a fair catch and make it at about the 13-yard line. But Purdue holds. Well, they're right back in the ballgame. Shadows creeping across the field with 9.47 to go, and time now for Notre Dame Now, presented by Sprint, the Now Network. You know, you're up 20 to 3, and your All American wide receiver fumbles a touchdown pass that should have made it 27 to 3, game over. Then your defense stops Purdue inside the five. Your offense on the first snap gives up a safety. Purdue goes ahead and scores on a long fourth and one run by Robert Marv, and all of a sudden, Tom, we got ourselves a one score game at 20 to 12. And Purdue takes over, first down at their own 12 yard line. Movement up front, that'll be penalty against the Boilermakers. And I got to tell you, Tom, we talked in our open, and we talked with Brian Kelly about fourth quarter. Better conditions, tougher, all those things. We're going to find out now. They lost four games at the end of last year, embarrassingly, in the fourth quarter. Sorting out the penalty. False start. Offense, number 73. Five yards. Big first out. Ken Blue with a false start. Three fresh defensive linemen in the game right now. From the seven yard line. Marv rolling to his left, sets his feet, fires it way down field, and through the hands of Cortez Smith. He was one-on-one -on -one with Darren Walsh. Interesting, coming out of the shadows, trying to catch the football in the sunlight. A one-on-one -on, -one on that bootleg. Outside receiver, it's just a go route. No double move. He runs right by Darren Wall. Got a chance to make a play and couldn't come up with the catch. That was a good throw by Marv. I thought an excellent call by offensive coordinator Gary Nord. Cortez Smith, you got to make a play. There are the numbers uh, on Marv. When he opened up at Florida as a University of Miami player, and today, second down. Hayes 
Dwight to Smith. Keith Smith upended immediately by Wall. <laughs> I like the fact that he didn't let that last play get to him, and he makes the physical play. Watch right here at the block. He beats the block of Smith, comes up and makes the cut tackle on the other Smith. And if you play corner for Bobby Diaco, I'm going to tell you right now, you better destroy blocks and make that. And you got to have a short memory, too, right? right? Exactly. Huge third down here. Third down at 16 for Purdue, deep in its own territory. And a flag has come down. And Walls is out of the game. Blanton's in. Illegal substitution. 12 men in the huddle. Half oh. this the goal. The down remains third. So Purdue had 12 in the huddle. That's a half the distance penalty. Purdue with two sloppy penalties here at a critical time inside their own 10 yard line. Just when they had seemingly things going their way. Yeah, Cortez Smith comes up with that big catch down the field. It's a different story right now. Instead, falls on your own four yard line, man. From their own four, third down and 18. 12 guys in the huddle. Minnesota Vikings remember that from a year ago against the New Orleans Saints. This was again. Timeout. Purdue. So Their Purdue first. calls a timeout. Came from the sideline, I believe. Timeout Purdue facing a third and 18 from their own four. Down at the loudest end of the stadium in front of the Notre Dame students. Purdue with a third down and 18 from their own four-yard line. Mark was just having a conversation with Smith right there. No good play call here, trust me. Mark stumbles coming away from center. He's going to heave it downfield, and Siller can't hold on. He was open, but the ball hung up. Darren Walls again on defensive coverage. Interesting. I don't know if the center stepped on Marv's foot as he came away, yep. but this was nearly another big play. Coming out right there. The left foot of the right guard, and then finally at the end of the play, you can see him roll out. You get a one-on-one -on -one shot down the field. Good coverage by Wall. Siller almost comes up with it nearly. So Wiggs punting from his own end zone, does one of those rugby-style punts, and Allen will let it bounce, and it will be uh, downed in Purdue territory. So good field position here for the Irish. They had it once before the last series and were stopped by the Purdue defense. There is a flag back up field. Now what great field position for the Irish. During the kick, holding the returning team. Ten yards, end of the run, first down. You know, just a moment again, I thought Notre Dame gave Purdue a chance to make a play for one of the few times in the game they're in a single high safety where you've got single coverage on the outside. Safety can't help you. So when Marv rolls out, Darren Walls at the bottom of the screen is not going to get help from his safety. Safety's jumping in here. That's one-on-one. -on -one. To me, third and 18, that's a little risky. You you gave an athlete, Justin Siller, who's 6'4", 225, a chance to make a one-on-one -on -one catch in a smaller corner. So first down after the penalty. And fans wanting an uh, interference call against T.J. Jones, but no play. Jones was uh, receiving in with Carlo Allen, the Purdue man. Yeah, and I thought he got there a little early. Here it is right here with the matchup now. That's a freshman, 105-9, 180. Pretty good change of direction. The coaches tell me they he was a highly recruited kid, had several SEC offers. They don't always they get that kind of athlete at Purdue at corner, but he still has a lot to learn. Hand off to Allen. Armando Allen. She had a couple of tacklers, picked up a first down. That one good for 13 yards for Allen. Jason Werner tracked him down. Good job by Zach Martin. Just getting enough of good. Right, watch the matchup right here. Just gets enough of good to provide a hole for Allen. Pushes him outside. Gets up in. North and south. And now it's about field position. Hold on to the football. Look at Floyd. We've been talking about his blocking all day. I give the big fellas some credit. They haven't been able to use him in the pass game a lot, but he's been positive in the run game. Here's Allen the other way with a 
the seam. Armando Allen's inside the 30. Down to the 36-yard line, a 17-yard game. They're chopping them up inside, running the football. Armando Allen, you can see right there. There's the key block on the inside. Armando Allen bounces it outside. Mm. The 8-yard line. with another first down. Are they moving the ball on this drive. And they're moving it on the ground with Allen. Allen. That one got about four yards to the 25. Joe Holland, linebacker for the Boilermakers. You know, Chris Stewart, Braxton Cave, Trevor Roberts, and those three inside guys are the ones that have played and started here before at Notre Dame. The tackles haven't, and they've had a big day today. Now that's what you like, because now you know what's coming. If Purdue keeps it on, you know you've got two linebackers coming right in here. And they stood over there. Look at them checking everything off. If Purdue stays in it, Notre Dame, yeah, here they go. Shotgun. Purdue's coming out of it now. Play clock to two. Chris pops one. Goes for the end zone for Ford. Incomplete. No flag. Uncatchable ball. Chris could have done a better job of giving his receiver a chance to make a play. Double move, it's good coverage, but throw it up and let him make a catch. Because if the ball stays in bounds, I think that's an interference call. Look at the ref right there. The ref was touching over the top of his head saying, uncatchable ball, wave off the interference. Third down, seven. Empty set. This could be some kind of quarterback run or draw here. I like what I see in the box if you're Notre Dame. From the empty backfield. Chris loads it up and finds Rudolph. Kyle Rudolph. Good for 11 yards. First down, Irish. Moving here with six and a half to go. This is the route they used early in the game an awful lot. The detached tight end, Kyle Rudolph, 265 pounds. Stems inside, comes back out to the first down marker, secures the football. Good drive by Notre Dame. First down, Purdue 14. And they see the blitz again. Here it was coming from the slot up top. Ricardo Allen, the freshman, getting a little bit antsy on the blitz. Crist under pressure will be sucked back to the 20 yard line. There's Ryan Kerrigan again. Kerrigan and Warner overload blitz. They should have been able to see Allen coming one on one with the All American tight end, and he beats him. But remember, 24, Jason Warner, who's blitzing, is the one that makes the play. Yeah, right Warner. there, unblocked. Warner. And Ricardo Allen came over late trying to pick him up. Loss of six on the Jason Warner uh, sack. So second down, 16, the ball back at the 20-yard line. Empty again. Chris, scrambling. Couldn't find, had a man open, couldn't find him, and finally ducks under at the 20-yard line. I think sometimes young quarterbacks are afraid to make a mistake, and I think he had a chance to make a play. Good job on the blitz pickup. He broke outside the pocket, but held on to the football. Remember, Tom, we've got an eight-point game. You want at least a field goal out of this drive to turn it into a two-possession game. As we take under five minutes. Third down and very long. Third down and 16. He's playing that soft shell back here. Play clock at four. Here's the snap. Pop in zone. Same play as a moment ago. Through the hands of Michael Floyd and into the percussion section. And we're right into a drum. Zian Williams. Yeah, I really think he and Dane need to time this up a little bit better. Dane's got to give him a chance to make this play inbound. Again, double move out to the outside. He ought to be jumping for it earlier because even if he catches that football, he's not getting the foot down. I have no problem with the play call, but the execution from the quarterback has to be better. So Ruffers on to attempt the field goal. 37-yard attempt. Ruffers hit two already. From 
37 yards. It is on the mark. It's good. Notre Dame adds to its lead. It's now 23 12 Irish. Thursday night is time to get back to football with a marquee matchup the Super Bowl champion Saints against the Vikings. Then next Sunday night is football night in America as the Cowboys head to Washington to face the Redskins. The NFL kickoff weekend starting this Thursday, 7.30 Eastern, only on NBC. Chris Collinsworth will be making his way to broadcast the Thursday game with Al Michaels, of course, making his way to New Orleans. And there's his son, Austin, a freshman from Highlands High School in Fort Thomas, Kentucky, who is uh, on special teams for the Irish. And this is his first game at Notre Dame Stadium. And that exciting. Here he is right here. And Durkin are deep. A rougher scripts one picked up by Durkin. And stacked up. Special teams have done a good job for the Irish today. There's Austin on cue right down there in the middle of things. <laughs> he got a little piece. He got a little piece now. Here, here we go. Let's check it out. Coming down hard. Wide receiver. I bet he didn't do much of wedge busting in high school. Good job keeping his feet. Jump on the pile, big boy. Nice job, Austin. Uh, who's more excited, Austin or uh, Chris and Holly, his parents? <laughs> I love that. I guarantee you he didn't break up one wedge in high school. Time starting to work against Purdue now as they go to the reverse. And Edison. Edison. It's a nice run out of it. It's not just short of the 40 and close to a first down. Pretty good back backside discipline. Curry deal. Just got to make a tackle. Flow goes one way. Ball comes back the other. 56 deals out there in space. Gets cut. Good hustle from the inside out. By number 98, Sean Swinner. It was uh, first down, so clock stopped momentarily. Now has begun again and has gone under four minutes. Big play by Ethan Johnson, who collapsed him all the way back at the 35-yard line. Ethan Johnson, what they call their five technique in this 3-4 defense. He's going to be one-on-one -on, -one on the edge with the right tackle. Nick Mondek does a good job using his hands, collapsing Mondek and feeling the quarterback back inside. Real nice job by Johnson. Second down, 14. Mars fires a bullet, and it's caught by Edison. It's going to be short of the first down and bring up a third for the Boilermakers. And the clock approaching three minutes. Gary Gray with another tackle. He's had a career high tackle today. I like this Edison kid, number 13, the sophomore. I think he's a playmaker for Purdue. When Smith looked to have some room and perhaps to pick up a first down, Manti Teo. All day long on the wide receiver screens, Teo, I think, has done a great job from the inside out, feeling the screen immediately and exploding to the ball carrier. There's the expansion, get on top of it, makes the hit, one-on-one -on -one in the open field, cleans it up. That, that's a big-time play by an inside linebacker. Bang. So now Purdue forced to go for it. Fourth down and five. Got to go. He's down 11. Clock at 217 and moving. Marv under center. Fourth and five. Rolling to his right. Now being chased. Hangs it up. There's a flag down as the ball falls incomplete. Intended for Keith Smith. <laughs> And the coach has talked all week about his ability to improvise when things fall apart. And, Tom, you've been all over him today about his ability to throw on the run outside the pocket. Bootleg again. They've been hanging their hat on boot all day long. Critical situations have been boot. Notre Dame defense. Again, we talked fourth quarter. Here's the flag. Ineligible downfield offense, number 88. That penalty has declined. Notre Dame takes over. All right, so Notre Dame's defense holds. And with 2.04 on the clock, they're up 23 12. They get the ball. Notre Dame Saturday continues next weekend here on NBC with one of the uh, 
uh, great college rivalries as the Michigan Wolverines come in to face the Fighting Irish. That's Notre Dame, Michigan. That's live next Saturday at 3.30 Eastern here on NBC. And at last report, uh, the Wolverines had a pretty sizable lead over UConn. Jock seemingly handing the balance this season. Armando Allen gets the call. Michigan's interesting because Chris Rodriguez has got a different kind of athlete to play the schemes that he does. And, you know, on offense, they're a spread team. Michigan never was. On defense, they play a three-man front with three linebackers and five defensive backs. Completely different scheme. Pressure's on. Sets up a big game for us next week, Tom. 30 to 10. They're leading UConn at the moment. As we tick down here toward a minute 30, Allen gets the call again. And the senior to the 40-yard line. Armando Allen's done a pretty good, a good job toting the football today. 16 carries and uh, approaching 90 yards. That's 17 carries, 90 now for Allen on the day. And how about Sierra Woods, 7 for 58. I mean, they've carried the ball 34 times Notre Dame has for 153 yards, averaging almost 5 yards a carry. I'd say that's pretty good balance, Tom. Purdue with a timeout. They're down to one timeout with a minute 26 on the clock. Well, Notre Dame had a chance to put the game away when uh, Michael Floyd seemed to be heading in for the uh, for a touchdown in the end zone. And then uh, the ball just came out of his grasp and things turned Purdue's way there for a while. So I know Coach Kelly won't be pleased that they let Purdue get back in the game when they seem to be about to put him away. But it looks like they're going to hang on for a bit. And I think I agree with everything he just said, but I think what he will take away from this is even though they let him climb back in, the conditioning and the toughness that we talked about at the very beginning of the program has shown up in this fourth quarter on both sides of the line. Of Gonna go to the air. Nice catch made by Michael Floyd. That's out of bounds. Good morning to go out of bounds. But it is a first down. That, that's a big time catch right there. Shows why he's so good. The ball's thrown to the outside, which it should be on that route. Salt corner. Go to the sticks. Find the football, secure, and get the first down. And a very nice catch, and then the presence to get the first down. 121 now on the clock. the 30 yard line to the 30 Notre Dame in openers played here at the stadium is 39 7 and 1 coming in it's actually the first time they've opened against Purdue at Notre Dame Stadium since 1980 first time they've opened for, for uh, against Purdue anywhere since 84 and uh, the series for the shillelagh Dating back to 1896, and they played uh, the Irish have played Purdue more than any other team except Navy. And it looks like Notre Dame is going to claim that shillelagh once again. Looks like Notre Dame is going to beat Purdue for the third straight time. They had a 20 to 3 lead, the Irish did, before letting Purdue get back in it. But the game will end as the final seconds tick away 23 to 12 as Danny Hope and Brian Kelly exchange handshakes at midfield. So the Brian Kelly era underway at Notre Dame and underway with a victory. And the excitement that has been building around this Notre Dame team with the anticipation of the Kelly era will continue as they'll square off against Michigan in a week as we go down to Alex. Well, Coach, what do you think? Um, it wasn't so pretty. <laughs> it wasn't. Uh, well, you know, it's a great win. Obviously, opener, you know, obviously for our kids, just getting the win is, is really big. Um, but we made it a lot harder on ourselves. Obviously, we got to catch the ball, um, you know, protection we made some mistakes but you know what at the end of the day Purdue's a good football team and we got a good win today let's talk about maybe two of the glaring mistakes the fumble by Michael Floyd the safety um, by Armando Allen well you know Mike you know caught the ball and just fumbled it I mean he's a great player he made a great catch to end the game here so you're going to keep going to your guy and he made a play uh, 
we just we blew the blocking assignment on the backside of an inside zone play, which is unexcusable. Uh, that's on us as coaches. There's no way that we should ever let that happen. So we got some things to clean up on, but I'd rather be cleaning things up after a win than sitting here complaining about a loss. I think a lot of the viewers might be surprised at how well you were able to run the ball and really how much you ran the ball. What do you make of your ability to run? Well, I thought we could run the football. I mean, we've got to do a better job uh, just in, in our balance relative to throwing the ball, and, and, and that's the maturation of the quarterback. He's going to get better and better each and every week. So if our quarterback continues to get better and we can run the football effectively like we did today, we'll, we'll be okay. Congratulations on your first win. Thank you. It's great. Thanks, Alex. Tom. All right, so Brian Kelly in his opener gets the victory at Notre Dame, and they did do a good job running the ball. Nine carries, 10 yards or more, something that had been missing in the past from a Notre Dame rushing attack. Now the playing of the Notre Dame alma mater. Came out ready to play, and I mean, this coaching staff has built that in us from from the summer. And I mean, our intensity showed out here. And I mean, the defense played well, the offense played well. And I mean, we we showed it today. How much do you think you were able to set the tone for the defense today with an early interception? Well, I think it, I mean, it made a big statement. A lot of guys um, out there calling our defense slow, and uh, we're not capable to play with many guys. But I think today we saw a lot of people what a defense can what a defense can do. So many people in this country talking about the spread offense coming in. You guys come in and you run the ball really well. Why were you able to do it so well, Armando? I think, uh, you know, with everybody being spread out, it provided a couple extra holes that we normally wasn't used to seeing. Uh, I think we took that with a grain of salt and just ran with it today. What do you think it means for the offense going forward? Uh, I think it's motivation. I think we all know that we can get better. You know, obviously we go in tomorrow and focus on getting better. And I think, you know, big ups to the offensive line that came out here and played very, very hard today. Great, you guys. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, so Darren Walls, who had the interception, and Armando Allen, who carried for 93 yards in the touchdown today in the Irish opening game win against Purdue. And uh, one of the things I was saying, uh, Mike, is that uh, in the past, uh, big plays from the rushing game didn't seem to happen for Notre Dame. They did spread the field out today, and they had nine carries for 10 yards or more, four by Allen, four by Sierra Wood, and one by Dane Christ himself. And you talk about taking pressure off a young quarterback and Brian Kelly. I really like what Brian had to say in his interview with Alex. And he said part of the run game 
is running the football effectively. But the other part with the young quarterback <laughs> is taking the pressure off him. Give him time to develop because if this kid develops, that's a potent offense. With Michael Floyd on the edge, you've got a couple young guys like Riddick and, and TJ, and, and they're pretty good football players in space. So if this defense can play, watch out for Notre Dame. Well, Chris, to 19 to 26 for 205 yards and a touchdown today. A day that began with Brian Kelly leading his players onto the field for the first time as the Notre Dame head coach. This was a moment of great exhilaration, great excitement. And then the game began, and Armando Allen showed that the Irish would have a potent running game as he dives for the pylon and into the end zone. And he had a big punt return, too, did Allen, that would set up a Notre Dame score. And then the freshman, T.J. Jones, getting a start today at wide receiver and immediately let us know that he'll be a weapon as well as he catches the touchdown from Dane Chris. It looked like they were going to put the game away when Floyd just lost his football heading for the end zone and Purdue able to pick it up. But then uh, after the Notre Dame defense held the safety as Allen was tackled in the end zone. And then Robert Marv untouched into the end zone for the Purdue touchdown. The dive will cost him a penalty on the kickoff. But Notre Dame ends up holding on for the victory by a 23-12 mark. And uh, the Irish get that much-wanted first game win. The first six games, it seems to me, are crucial for the season to be successful for Notre Dame. And beating Purdue here was almost a must to have a successful campaign. And I'll tell you what's really exciting, at least for us, is that Michigan had a big win today with UConn. And Rich Rodriguez on the hot seat. One of the most fabled rivalries in college football history. Next Saturday right on this field. And somebody's going to step up and get a W. And somebody else's season is going to go in a different direction. Michigan on the way to a big win over UConn today. So that'll ease the pressure on Coach Rich Rodriguez a little bit as they come to Notre Dame next week. Now if you're Brian Kelly and you are going back uh, to make adjustments. I thought they made some good adjustments early in the game. They, they first of all adjusted adjusted to run the football instead of passing from the spread. They uh, adjusted their uh, pickup of Brian Kerrigan, the defensive end of Purdue, a little bit. So I thought they made some good adjustments. In this week before Michigan now, what do you tweak? Well, what I like to start with was the run game, as you mentioned. And the bottom line is whether it was Sierra Woods making plays or Armando Allen, I think the three interior offensive linemen did a great job. Cage did a great job. Look at the cut there. Michael Floyd with the block down the field. And Armando Allen is a talented back. Sierra Wood is a very talented back. Again, look at the block by the running back. The quick move and the first down by the quarterback, Dane Chris. And again, the punt return by Armando Allen. So I thought the Irish special teams had a good day. Mike yeah. Elston, the special team coach. Great kickoff coverage. The big punt return. Sierra Wood is difficult in space. Look at that hole. Wow. Tom, you and I could both run through that thing hip to hip. That's how wide Don't that hole was. Don't get carried away now. Don't Wait, get you and me, away. buddy, hip to hip. <laughs> and when you look at the numbers and the running back comparison, you know, 8.3 yards per carry, 5.2 yards per carry. I don't care what the numbers say. They got it done up front, and that's the important thing to make. Okay, if, uh, if a successful season uh, falls and a great deal on the shoulders of the defense. How did you assess their performance? They only gave up 10 points. Two of the points were a safety, of course. They had two interceptions. They had four sacks. Yeah, and I think if you look at Bobby Diaco, the defensive coordinator, and where he's been, it gives you a clue of what you're going to see, and that is he's an Al Gro disciple. Where did Al Gro come from? Bill Belichick, Bill Parcells, cover two, three, four, and that's what they did today, a soft shell zone, attack up front, I thought they did a great job against a very talented group of Purdue receivers and keeping everything in front of them. And then what I really like, Tom, I love the tackling, and I think it's a lost art sometimes. Manti Teo in the pass game. We love him in the run game, right. but today, inside out on all those wide receiver screens, great job. Both corners, you kidding me, Walls did a great job. Gary Gray, Blanton, one-on-one, -on -one, they made the plays. Well, next week we're going to have a battle of unbeatens because Michigan has opened up with a victory over UConn. Impressive start for the Wolverines. And they set the tone early as they went 14 plays, 96 yards on their opening drive, capped off by a Vincent Smith 12-yard run. And Michigan led 7-0.
In the next drive for Michigan, quarterback Robinson, Denard Robinson going 32 yards for the score to put Michigan up 14-0. And late in the third quarter, UConn trailing 24-10, fourth and one of the Michigan seven. Wow. DJ Shoemate fumbles, recovered, and OB Eze of Michigan. Michigan makes a UConn pay with that 96-yard march down the field. Robinson throws an 11-yard touchdown to Vincent Smith. Missed extra point, but it's 30-10 Wolverines. Terrific performance by Robinson, who got the start at quarterback. We didn't know if it would be Robinson or Forcier. Robinson comes in and leads the Wolverines to that impressive 20-point victory over UConn. And the efficiencies in the pass game, 19 for 22. Rich Rodriguez wouldn't let any. He actually threw a third quarterback in there, trying to say who to keep him up in the air up until the actual kickoff. So I think what we're going to see next week is a very athletic offense led by uh, the quarterback we just saw, Denard Robinson, in Michigan's defense. That three-man front, three linebackers, five deep, a little different look for Notre Dame. Well, these two teams are great rivals, of course, adjoining states. They're 1-2 in terms of winning percentage in all of college football, and there have been some great moments. 1989, Rocket Ismail had two consecutive kickoff returns. <laughs> Something about pure speed, huh? Look at him just outrun angles, get into the end zone. That wasn't the only one, though, was it? That went for 88 yards, and he did even better on this one. This one will cover 92 yards, and it proved to be the difference as Notre Dame won 24-19 at the Big House. 1991, Elvis Gerbach completed 20 of 22, including this fourth and one diving catch by Desmond Howard. Michigan won that one 24-14. And just last season, with Michigan trailing 34-31, freshman Tate Forcier hit Greg Matthews with 11 seconds left to lift the Wolverines to victory. So expecting more of the same this coming Saturday, and uh, with, the, with the pressure perhaps eased a bit on Rich Rodriguez with a, uh, with a victory today over UConn in impressive faction, uh, it should be a great matchup beneath the Golden Dome a week from now at Notre Dame Stadium. Okay, if you had to sum up this uh, victory for Brian Kelly, um, as he talked to Alex, almost relief. Yeah, it wasn't pretty, he said, but uh, it seemed like uh, he was in great spirits because they got that first one under their belt and they see that they're, they're on their way to making progress in the areas he thought they needed to make progress. And I thought he summed it up perfectly. I really did, and, and he was relieved, yes, and he knows they made some mistakes. Pass protection. Uh, play coming out of the end zone that became a safety poor block coming out of there. They made some mistakes. They come out of it with a W and again solid defense and a great run game. Well Mike Mayock your uh, first time in the booth at Notre Dame Stadium. I told you it'd be fun. I couldn't have had a better time. Thank you Thomas. <laughs> it was fun. So be sure to go to NBCSports.com right now for exclusive postgame coverage. This Thursday, back to football, the Saints take on the Vikings. And Sunday, September 12th, Sunday night is football night, the Cowboys against the Redskins in D.C. Notre Dame Saturday continues next weekend. It'll be a battle of unbeatens early in the season as the Irish host longtime rival Michigan. That'll be 3.30 p.m. Eastern here on NBC. So for Mike Mayock and Alex Flanagan, this is Tom Hammond saying so long from Notre Dame Stadium.